now back to estimation uh, problem uh, so do you remember that so this uh, so this is uh, right in the very beginning we did that when this thing follow a z curve so we use this curve so basically we use this probability statement and eventually we ended up with uh, uh, this confidence interval for mu okay we put this one in the this uh, eventually i showed you this one earlier so uh, this uh, we started with this and this gave this confidence interval so now so when the sigma is unknown now you already know that when the minute you replace this thing by s okay so this is going to follow a t distribution okay so this thing follow a t distribution and so we are going to do the same thing now so here t l power 2 t is also just like the z curve so it's the same thing the only difference now here i have instead of having the sigma i have the s and so we are looking at this starting with uh, minus t l power 2 to from this value to this value so we are looking at from this value to this value so we if you do the same thing we are going to end up with uh, instead of having this confidence interval so we are going to have this 100 times 1 minus alpha percent confidence interval for mu is going to be the x bar uh, instead of having the z table value now i have the t table value instead of the sigma i have the s Okay, so in other words, it's exactly the same answer as before, except this value is different and this value is, of course, you have to replace this thing by S. This is the T table value. Okay, so the, now the assumptions, uh, there are the assumptions came with that, uh, that our theorem before. So you remember that in that theorem, what we said is that, so this has to be a norm. Okay, so that, but uh, there was also something else t is getting closer and closer to the z for large j okay so those are the two things you need to keep it in mind so here one assumption initial population must be uh, must be a normal one that's one assumption okay so that otherwise that t curve thing is not correct so this this one is otherwise is not correct okay so see this one has to be normal and the second one got to be a random sum okay random sum so so the thing is that these are the ideal conditions okay so now so the so make couple of notes okay so if sigma is known you need to use the z interval in other words if sigma is known you have no business of replacing this thing by a estimate after all s value is an estimate for the sigma okay so you do not replace sigma by s if you already know the sigma value okay so in other words if sigma is known you should not use this interval you should sometimes people say that this is the z interval this is the t interval okay so you have no business of using the t interval so you need to use the z interval what we did in the very beginning okay so that's the first note and so it's the same one here as a very first one okay so if sigma is unknown and uh, the t interval is the correct answer because you are going to replace the uh, sigma by s value basically is the correct interval regardless of whether the n is small or large whether you are dealing with a small n or large n that t interval is the, the right interval okay however for large n okay so you can even say that this is a kind of rule of thumb most people use or could be 40 or could be 50 but for large n you already know that the t table value is almost same as the z table value so practically like if you're looking at 100 here so this is very close to each other so there's no difference in other words so that means whether you use the t table value or the z table value in other words what you're doing is that right there so you are putting the t or the z table value they are almost the same thing you are putting okay so your interval is answer is going to be almost the same okay so in other words uh, 
so you are going to get the same answer whether you use the t, t interval or the z interval but this is the correct approach okay that the theorem gave you the correct approach okay the t interval is the correct approach okay so also there's a something else going into that so if you are dealing with a large n you remember that we were using the central limit theorem in the very beginning so also we said that you know you can accurately estimate that sigma by s so you really don't need that initial assumption if you have a, if you are dealing with a very large n okay so you can relax on that part the initial population does not need to be normal could be approximately normal something like that okay so you can relax on that assumption so that's the, the second note okay the third one if the initial population is mound shaped in other words it's not really normal but somewhat close to like a normal like with a little bit like that you know something like that with a little bump you know sort of shape is mound shape and something like that and so and if n is small if you decide to use it okay so the interval you are again of course if you decide to use it you got to use the t interval okay and the, the t interval give you a somewhat approximate answer the closer this one is to the normal you get a more accurate answer okay but if it is going to leave it a little bit away from the normal okay if you are not sure about whether it's a really normal then in that case is the answers you are going to get is somewhat approximate okay so if it is normal you have the guaranteed dance so in other words your answer is good okay so but if it is a it's going to deviate away from the normal your answer is going to be somewhat approximate so the fourth note do not use the t interval if if the data are skewed or if the outliers are present okay of course unless you have a very large sample if you have a very large sample you remember that the central limit theorem will kick in so very large okay so then everything kind of will eventually turn into a normal case for the x bar so everything is good okay so unless that is the case but in general if when you say is cute something like that you do not want to use the to construct the confidence interval with a small length out at all okay unless you know that you know skewed data or the outliers so say for example the problem is this if you pull a small data out of that the more or less you are not going to get anything from here there's very little chance of getting the outlier actually. if you pull a say for example 10 values out of this distribution you very likely you are, you might you might not see anything but the really the data they are skewed okay so the, the theory may not hold but the theory is okay sort of sort of okay if you are dealing with a very large gain okay so that's that so so to, so now if you have a data set in a question if it's the question says that if the, the data is they are going to follow normal distribution so in other words from the past data or something like that you, when you do the examples you will see that sometimes some question says that or sometimes when you do things you might know that the from the past data the data follow a normal curve so if that's the case everything is fine you already know that the data follow normal but if you have a data set a small data set you do not know whether the data is coming from a normal distribution so to check the whether the data is coming from a normal distribution you can look into things like you can look at the uh, like a uh, um, histograms sort of mount shape or maybe box plot you remember that the things we did before the box plot the histograms and the normal uh, quantile plots those three you can utilize those three the histo histogram is not a good answer because even yeah, like you remember even the t curve is symmetry histogram or pretty much tells whether that is symmetric or not okay so it doesn't say that but this is a good uh, one to check 
normal quantile plots. So that will tell precisely the data is coming from a normal distribution. So if the data is not coming, coming from a normal distribution, you do not want to use unless you have a huge sample. Okay? So all the outliers are present. So like if you're using the box plot, you can kind of see that whether there are outliers. Okay? Also, sometimes you can, with the box plot, you can see whether they are, the data, they are skewed. That's where those graphical methods comes into the picture. Okay. But, uh, so this is a good tool. This one, the normal quantile plot. Of course, you have to use, uh, uh, use uh, uh, computer software to do that. Okay. So in the exams, either the, in the questions, e either that will say that the, the your initial uh, distribution will follow normal distribution but if it doesn't say that if you have to use that this procedure uh, to figure out the confidence interval after you figure out your answer you need to say that the validity of your answer depend on that assumption with examples i will show that okay so the next i'm going to look into uh, several examples uh, for that Okay, so the next uh, video I will show you the examples.